ಆದ್ವಿತೀಯ ಟೂ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಎಂ ಬಿ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ಪೀಡ್ ಬೇಕಕ್ಕೆ ಶ್ರೀಲಂಕಾವೇ ವೇಗವತ್ಮಸ ಪುಲೋಲ್ತಮ ಹೋಮ್ ಬ್ರಾಡ್ಬ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸಂಬಂಧ ತಾವೇವನ ಎಸ್ ಎಲ್ ಟಿ ಮೊಬಿಟೆಲ್ ದೇಶ ಫೈವ್ ಬಲವೇಗೆ ಒಬ್ಬತ್ ಅದು ಆತ್ವಿದಿನ್ನ Tonight on First and Nine, this Tuesday, the 2nd of May, 2023. Productive progress. Government to establish a National Productivity Commission as part of plans to boost economic recovery. Too many irons in the fire. How does the government plan to manage 14 institutions when it's struggling to manage a single entity? PUCSL Chairman Janaka Ratnayaka questions the rationality of the proposed CV Act. If somebody wants to restructure, they should restructure the finances of these entities first. Without you know, restructuring finances, if you break into pieces, can you get away with your losses? So this is a wrong concept. Red Herring. Professor G.L. Pierce doubts credibility over Justice Minister's allegations of an alleged bribe taken to prevent express per compensation. That would be roughly the equivalent of the total health budget of Sri Lanka for a year. Is it possible for an individual or even a company to pay such a large sum? Alliance Finance Mitru Rannai Sevave Run Pound Cutter Propel Ek Laksha Hatta Daha Saka Eela Atti Karma Obe Vishwasi Dino Sinsudain Then Lagamethi Pharmacy Inla Baga Tha Hacker From Adha Verana This is Adha Verana First at Nine With Andrew Bernard from studio 24 in colombo a very good evening and welcome to other than a 24's english news in your top story for tonight sri lanka with the assistance of saudi arabian ministry of foreign affairs yesterday evacuated the third batch of sri lankans from the war affected sudan now accordingly a group of 11 sri lankan nationals were evacuated under the kingdom of saudi arabia's evacuation program bringing the total number of sri lankans repatriated so far to around 30 meanwhile air strikes and artillery fire continue to echo across sudan's capital of khartoum today as the war entered its third week of fighting in a tweet the embassy of sri lanka in saudi arabia confirmed that the third batch of sri lankans were evacuated from war stricken sudan with the assistance of the saudi arabian ministry of foreign affairs According to the embassy a group of 11 Sri Lankan nationals had arrived in Jeddah yesterday and were received by Sri Lanka's consul general in Jeddah Sudan's war now entering its third week has forced 100,000 people to flee across the border creating a humanitarian crisis as gunfire and explosions echoed across the capital today in violation of another ceasefire The leaders of the army and paramilitary rapid support forces who previously shared power show no sign of backing down yet neither seem able to secure a quick victory raising the specter of a prolonged conflict that could draw in outside powers according to foreign media reports black smoke could be seen hanging over the capital Khartoum earlier today hundreds of people have died in the fighting that pits the army under general Abdul Fattah Al-Burhan against the RSF under general Muhammad Hamdan Daglo each has blamed the other for the violation of a series of ceasefires however at least 512 people have been killed and close to 4200 were reported wounded due to the raging battles since the 15th of April Now the government is set to establish a national productivity commission as part of recovery strategy to revive the country's struggling economy. Accordingly, the inter-ministerial working group has been appointed to lead the task comprising members of various ministries, departments and organizations. The president's office said that the working group aims to explore international insights on productivity materialization. Meanwhile the government reached out to the Australian Productivity Commission which is recognized as an international standard and in response the Australian Commission in Sri Lanka has expressed willingness to extend support to Sri Lanka the president's media unit said in a statement that the National Productivity Commission is the flagship project of several key recovery strategies initiated by the government Now Professor GL Pierce today challenges the credibility of the allegations made by Justice Minister Dr Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa over a high ranking official obtaining a bribe to not pursue the legal case to claim compensation 
from the express world vessel that exploded off the port of Colombo. Now, Professor Pires, meanwhile, insisted that it's responsibility of the central bank governor to explain how an individual could transfer a large amount equivalent to the amount allocated through the budget of, for the health sector through a single transaction. 250 million US dollars at the prevailing rate of exchange, that would be approximately 80 billion Sri Lanka rupees, that is 80,000 million rupees, which is roughly the equivalent of the total health budget of Sri Lanka for a year. Now, is it at all possible for an individual or for that matter even a company to pay such a large sum of money into a British bank account? Now, this money is said to have been paid in by an individual called Chamara Gunasekar. Is this credible for a moment? That is the crucial issue. Banks have a paramount obligation to combat financial crime. That is a position in the UK and indeed in almost all countries of the world. Especially when a sum that is as large as this is sought to be deposited, you know, they have to make meticulous inquiries into the, the identity of the person who is trying to deposit these funds. From where does he derive these funds? What is the nature of his business? If it comes from another account or from another company, the bank is duty bound to investigate that other company. And there is no way that a British bank with open arms will gladly accept a deposit of 250 million US dollars from an unknown person without carrying out any form of investigation whatsoever. It is beyond credibility. Any suspicious transaction of this nature has to be immediately reported to the Financial Investigation Unit of the Central Bank. In those circumstances, there is definitely an obligation, in my view, on the part of the Governor of the Central Bank to tell the country, to tell Parliament, is this feasible? Can such a thing happen either in Sri Lanka or in the United Kingdom? He has to answer that question. Now, the government's ability to manage 14 separate institutions, despite its inability to manage just the Ceylon Electricity Board, is questioned by the chairman of the Public Utilities Commission, Janaka Ratnayaka. He claimed that splitting the CB into 14 different institutions as part of the proposed act and selling them to private companies won't solve the problem of unsustainable debt of the institution. CBs will be broken into 14 pieces and they will give the management of Mahavali and the other reservoirs to, priva to privately owned companies. These companies will come under the Company Act of 2007 of 7. What happens is when they cannot manage this entity, one entity, how can they manage 14 entities? And again we are talking about restructuring government businesses, giving it to public. Now what they are trying to propose here is indirectly to have 14 more companies. When they cannot make, manage one entity, can they manage 14 entities? They are forming a company to manage Norris Chole, which supplies, you know, 40% of our power generation. We are looking at energy security and national security and everything, you know, when it goes to a, another entity, how can you have assurance that they will probably not misuse it? Earlier, the practice was by this reservoirs, the priority was given to cultivation and drinking water. Here, they have said that the companies could demand their water requirement from the water secretariat. These are the things that English members should think about. They have been connected to the industry for many years, unlike me, and they should know the repercussions and the danger of this act. And again, they are mandated only to relieve the scope of what is intended in 2002, the Electricity Act. They have bypassed everything and they have even touched the independent commission. They are looking at repealing certain clauses of PUCSL and bringing a Electricity Commission. And the powers are vested only with the Minister of Energy. According to this, the Electric Commission will be appointed by the Minister and removed as and when he wants. And there's a special clause here, any difficulty arising from this. And the Minister can have a gasset and clear that bottleneck. See how dangerous is this? And if you look at the real value of CB and CPC, running into trillions, not billions. If somebody wants to restructure, they should restructure the finances of these entities first. Without you know, restructuring finances, if you break into pieces, can you get away with your losses? So this is a wrong concept. Now, this Samagi Janabala Vegas says that they have no intention of joining the national government proposed by President Ranil Vikram Singh and his government. Speaking during a media briefing today, MP Tissa Tanayaka said that the SJB is not willing to be part of the national government along with those responsible for the collapse of the economy. Api visal sekarang ni, mei mei dini pas se, laban na mei dini nak kotor visal, desa pal na peradia katwila tiayi kila. Makudu mei awurud, rata jana tawa daddy pidanet hasunu awurud dah. 
විශේෂයෙන්ම ජාතික ආණ්ඩු කියලා මේ ආණ්ඩුව යෝජනා කරන ජනාධිපතිතුමා යෝජනා කරන ඒ අදහස අපි කිසිසේත් පිළිගන්න සූදානම් නැහැ ජාතික ආණ්ඩුව කරන්න හදන්නේ රට බංකොලොත් උනාය කියලා බංකොලොත් කලායි කියන චෝදනා කරන කණ්ඩායම එක්කම රවටන දේශපාලනයේ තමයි 74ක් වසරක් තුල තිබුණේ දැන් අපි කියන්නේ සිස්ටම් චේන්ජ් ඇත්ත කතා කරලා जनाधिपतिल Now the Indian Air Force chief V R Chandrohari who is currently on a four day visit to Sri Lanka discussed ways to improve defense cooperation with Sri Lanka during meetings with Sri Lanka's state minister of defense the Air Force and the Navy chiefs for the discussions on enhancing cooperation with the regional militaries exchanging information and technology and strengthening marine surveillance operations were also discussed Indian Air Force Chief Air Chief Marshal V R Chaudhary arrived in Sri Lanka yesterday on a four-day official visit. He called on State Minister of Defence Pramita Bandar Thennakoon in Colombo today. During the meeting, the State Minister of Defence said he looks forward to work closely for mutual benefit and regional security. The Indian Air Force Chief said the long-standing defence cooperation between the two countries should continue, and he would extend his support in this regard. This morning the Indian Air Force chief called on the command of Sri Lankan Air Force Air Marshal Sudarshan Patirana at the Air Force headquarters in Colombo. The discussions between the two parties focused on enhancing cooperation with the regional militaries, holding joint military drills, exchanging of information and technology and strengthening marine surveillance operations. Meanwhile, the Indian Air Force chief also called on command of Sri Lanka Navy Vice Admiral Priyanta Pereira. Discussions were held on several matters of bilateral importance whilst recalling the long-standing friendship between the two countries. Nalditra Gas Lanka Limited says the price of its 2.12.5 rather kilogram domestic LP gas cylinder will be reduced by around 100 rupees with effect from midnight tomorrow. Addressing media today its chairman Mudita Peris said the official statement of the company pertaining to price reduction of its LP gas products will be released tomorrow. State Gas Supply Litro Gas Lanka Limited announced that the prices of its domestic LP gas cylinders will be reduced with effect from midnight tomorrow. According to Litro Chairman Mudita Peris, he noted that the price of a 12.5 kg gas cylinder is expected to be reduced by around 100 rupees. ඔයගොල්ලන්ට මතක ඇති අපි ගිය පාර රුපියල් 1005කින් ප්‍රධාන ගෑස් සිලින්ඩර් මිල අඩු කළා. හෙට දිනේ අපි බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා නැවත වතාවක් රුපියල් 100කින් පමණ ගෑස් සිලින්ඩරේ ප්‍රධාන ගෑස් සිලින්ඩරේ නැවත වතාවක් අඩු කිරීමක් කරන්න. ඒක නිල නිවේදනේ අපි හෙට බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා නිකුත් කරන්න උදෑසන. හෙට මැදිම රාත්‍රී ඉඳලා බලපවත්වන පරිදි මේක කරන්න තමයි අපි බලාපොරොත්තුව. ඊගව සිලින්ඩර් වර්ග දෙකෙත් මිල ගණන් වලට අදාළව අඩු වෙන්න නියමිතයි. Now the Department of Meteorology today forecasts that prevailing showery conditions across the island are expected to continue in the coming days. According to its general weather forecast, fairly heavy showers of about 100 mm are likely at some places in the eastern Andover provinces and in the Polonnaruwa district. Many parts across the country have been experiencing showery conditions in the recent days. Meanwhile today the Department of Meteorology said the prevailing weather pattern is expected to continue over the next few days as well issue in its general weather forecast for tomorrow the department said that showers or thunder showers will occur over most parts of the island after 1 pm Accordingly, fairly heavy showers of about 100 mm are likely at some places in the eastern and Uva provinces and in the Polonnaruwa district. In its weather forecast for sea areas around the island during the next 24 hours, the Med Department stated that winds will be southwesterly over the sea area around the island, adding that the wind speeds may increase up to 45 to 50 kilometers per hour at times in the sea areas off the coast extending from Colombo to Portville, via Gol and Hambantota. It was also mentioned that temporarily strong gusty winds and very rough seas can be expected during thunder showers.
Atmospheric conditions are still favorable for the formation of afternoon thunderstorms. Uh, due to southwesterly wind flow at the lowest level of the atmosphere, showers may occur in the coastal areas of western province and in Jaffna, Kirinochi, Mana, Putlam, Gol, and Matara districts uh, during the morning hours too. Fairly heavy falls about 100 mm are likely at some places in eastern and Uwa province and in Polonaro districts. Uh, fairly heavy falls above 50 mm also likely at some places elsewhere. Uh, general public is requested to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by temporary localized strong winds and lightning during the thunderstorms. Taking the prevailing weather condition into account, the National Building Research Organization meanwhile issued an early landslide warning for several places in the Badulla, Kegol and Matara districts. Kode Mada Perali Karana Bala Pulu Angkarya, Mahindra Yuvo, Timo Vitin. Vedama Godai, Kode Matamai, Swaraj Tractor, Timo Vitin. May Alu Tauru De Hita Pirana Kandunu Kata Honda Matana, Hita Diatana Banko, HNB. Welcome back. Now, Dialogue Oxiata PLC, the Oxiata Group Berhad and Bharti Airtel Limited entered into a binding term sheet to combine operations of Bharti Airtel Lanka Private Limited Airtel's wholly owned subsidiary with Dialogue, which is a subsidiary of the Oxiata Group Berhad. The proposed transaction envisages Airtel being granted a stake in Dialogue representing the fair value of Lank Airtel Lanka. Airtel would accordingly be issued new shares in dialogue upon completion of the transaction. Now, according to a Colombo stock market filing, discussions with respect to the proposed transaction are ongoing between the parties and also with relevant regulatory authorities as per applicable laws and regulations. The corporate disclosure went on to say that the proposed transaction is subject to signing of definitive agreements and necessary closing conditions, including applicable regulatory and shareholder approvals, adding that the parties involved will further issue announcements in due course should there be any material developments. Now, the Colombo boss declined for an 11th straight session today, recording the highest daily loss for this year. Today's market performance was weighed down by financial and industrial stocks. Now the benchmark All Share Price Index settled 3.03% lower to 8,711.46 points. Expo Lanka Holdings and LOLC Finance made the top losses on the ESPI, falling 5.3% and 5.5% respectively. Meanwhile, the more liquid S&P SL20 settled at 2,514.37 points, down 3.95%. Market turnover today rose to 983.9 million from 895.8 million rupees in the Friday session. Transportation was the top contributor to the market turnover, while the sector index lost 7.18%. In the meantime, foreign investors were the net sellers during the session, offloading 60.8 million rupees worth of stocks, while domestic investors were net buyers, purchasing shares amounting to 924 million rupees. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against the other major currencies during the day. Now, the International Monetary Fund expect Asia's economy to expand by 4.6% this year after 3.8% increase in 2022 and China and India are to be its key drivers. However, the IMF warned that the risks from persistent inflation and global market volatility driven by Western banking wars. In its Regional Economic Outlook report, the IMF said Asia and Pacific will be the most dynamic of the world's major regions in 2023, predominantly driven by buoyant outlook for China and India. They say domestic demand is expected to remain the largest growth driver across Asia in 2023. 
The IMF said Asia's economy is expected to expand 4.6% this year after a 3.8 increase in 2022, contributing around 70% of global growth, upgrading its forecast by 0.3% of a percentage point from October. China and India will be key drivers with an expansion of 5.2% and 5.9% respectively, though growth in the rest of Asia is also expected to bottom out this year. However, the IMF cut next year's Asian growth forecast by 0.2 of a point to 4.4% and warned of risks of the outlook such as stricter than expected inflation, slowing global demand as well as the impact of US and European banking sector stress. The global end is of view, while spillovers to the region from stress in US and European financial sectors have been relatively contained thus far. Asia remains vulnerable to tightening financial conditions and to sudden and disorderly repricing of assets. The IMF added that while Asia has strong capital and liquidity buffers to fend off market shocks, the region's highly leveraged corporate and household sectors are significantly more exposed to a sharp increase in borrowing costs. In this backdrop, the IMF also urged central banks in Asia, including Japan and China, to keep monetary policy tight to bring down inflation, which could remain stubbornly high due in part to robust domestic demand. The IMF noted that the costs of failing to bring inflation below targets are likely to outweigh any benefits from keeping monetary conditions loose. And that's all the news we have for this evening. Join us again tomorrow for the very latest news at the very same time. Tune into our social media pages until then to get the latest updates. Have a pleasant evening and good night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.